It's a debate over just what criteria should determine who gets into college. As I'm sure you've heard, Harvard is on trial in federal district court for its alleged discrimination in its admission process. Back in 2014, a group of Asian American applicants sued the school, accusing administrators of setting quotas for the number of Asian students admitted each year. Harvard strongly denies using any such quota, saying that while the school strives for a diverse student body, it does not discriminate against anyone in the process. And while this particular case is being brought on behalf of Asian American applicants, many are looking to this as a referendum on affirmative action in education as a whole, with the expectation that whatever the outcome here, this is headed to the Supreme Court of the U.S. Joined by Gregory Davis, he's a doctoral student in African American Studies at Harvard, supports the university in the lawsuit. Greg, thanks for being here. Thank you. Swan Lee is director of the Asian American Coalition for Education. It supports the Asian American applicants suing Harvard. Good to meet you as well. Me too. Jeannie Sue Gerson is a professor of Harvard Law School and a contributing writer at the New Yorker Magazine. Good to see you as well. Greg, let me start with you. You're with Harvard, as I said. Why? I'm with Harvard because they have the, the, the extent of the issue. They have the real push here. Um, Harvard's been admitting students based not just on merit, but on value to the school. Um, that has a lot to do with things like diversity as well as academic achievement. Um, the kind of historical bent of who's been admitted and who hasn't been admitted has converged over time. That there aren't any real racial differences in the admissions rates anymore. Did I read somewhere that you were in California when Prop 2 209 was on the ballot. What was I, your experience with that? Thank you. I went to UCLA School of Law um, post Prop 209, so post affirmative action there. And it, and it was an extraordinarily difficult place to uh, attend school. How so? We were, uh, African Americans are only 3 to 4 percent of the student population. And on top of that, um, while, we were just, while we were in class discussing issues around uh, affirmative action, racial profiling, policing, um, we were you know, kind of charged with telling the story of African Americans across the United States. We were charged with representing our race, and that was extraordinarily uncomfortable. And Swan, you're on the other side. You support the plaintiffs in this case. Why? Uh, I went to the court trial, and uh, I listened to the defense by Harvard, and they used uh, materials from the application package, as such as a first-generation Vietnamese student who used pencil in his mouth to practice English, or an African-American applicant who has certain career goals. I listened to all that, and none of them has to do with race. All that information is already in applicants' packages. All that information is there, regardless they consider race or not. So what they're not telling us is racial stereotypes associated with racial identity. But when you say you heard this during the trial, you supported this move mm -hmm. years before the trial started in its initial yes. phase. So what prompted you then to decide that that was the right side to be on, that Asian Americans are being discriminated against to the point where litigation did make sense. Yes, we do have 200 or, uh, partner organizations, and very few of our uh, members or volunteers actually are interested in going to Harvard, but they are concerned about the larger scale anti-Asian discrimination in most American colleges. They have the lowest acceptance rate. Do you support diversity? Do you think it's an important concept in higher education? Yes, the do. diversity achieved through socioeconomic status. Approach. I want to get back to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Jeannie, uh, uh, Harvard has argued, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, I know, you work there, that affirmative action is in the mix here. I, as a light, well, I'm a lawyer, sort of, but as an outsider, I think mm -hmm. it's in the mix. But I read your piece in The New Yorker, mm -hmm. and you contend this is not about affirmative action at all. It's about whether or not they discriminated against Asian Americans or not. Am I right in I stating guess, your position? No, I guess... Oh, you're the, not? I, okay, so my, what did you my say? My position is not that it's not about affirmative action at all. It's really that the, the trial almost has two different issues in it. One, it. one is the affirmative action issue, the legal the legal permissibility of that. But that issue has already been decided in favor of Harvard by the judge before the trial began. So that is resolved when the, now. This is when the lawyer in the case wanted to argue that the predominant factor rather than a factor, which is permissible, mm -hmm. and that's what the court said. That's not before us. The Supreme Court has determined that. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, the Supreme Court has determined that it is permissible to use race in admissions, and that issue is resolved. So what is going on at trial is the specific issue of whether Harvard discriminates against Asian Americans. But I, I, I want to understand what you're saying here, is while, as a fair-minded person, that might be true, that doesn't mean that regardless of the outcome, that the litigants here can't pursue this to the Supreme Court in the hopes that they'll overrule a decision. I think it was a 4-3 to three decision can. with Anthony Kennedy, by the way, they, the retired they Anthony Kennedy can. is the pivotal vote. Given that, that the issue has gone in favor of Harvard already, 
the other side will certainly appeal to the appellate court. Well, I think but that's too early to tell it's, that it's favorable for Harvard. I don't think Harvard actually met Fisher two requirements that Harvard has. Fisher's to, the University of Texas case. Right, and the, the Where, where the Justice ruling. Kennedy did decide for the majority. That, 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 in fact, let me read one line from that, if I just may, Swan, yeah, for a second. Alternatives first. Just one second. Well, Here's the judge what, already decided the issue in favor of Harvard. Can I just read this no, line? No, it's too early to say. Excuse me, you two. Let me just read one line from what uh, Justice Kennedy wrote there. Considerable deference is owed to a university in defining those intangible characteristics, like student body diversity that are central to its identity and educational mission. You know, putting aside Swan, I'm sorry, Sorry to interrupt you. Regardless, my contention, again, as an outsider, an observer, mm -hmm. is whether they rule for Harvard or whether they rule for the side that you support, mm -hmm. the other side is likely to appeal this up the ladder. You don't agree with that? I have no idea if uh, Harvard will appeal if they lose. But I think, I, I think it's will very likely appeal. that no matter who wins or loses, it will be appealed. Well, I, but, say, I don't think well, Harvard will this case I can't, at all. Small, one at a time. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, it is true that e either side will appeal, no matter who wins or loses. But the, the, the point that I'm making, Jim, is that at the trial itself, we are not the, the, debating, the, affirmative, not debating action affirmative action. Debating whether affirmative action is legal or not. We're debating whether Harvard met the legal standard for but the But you're purpose. not yeah, denying that met. litigants could use that as an issue to get Only the after the exhausted yes, alternatives, have, which Harvard has not if I may, that, exhausted at all. Well, first, um, Harvard sorry, has not even that's Let not, talk for a second. Just, like the, just like Jim, the quote you pulled from um, Fisher too, it is not that the Harvard has to exhaust all of its alternatives. They have to make a good faith effort. And Harvard, and Harvard has. Um, Harvard has not only this kind of deference the, that Jim was just mentioning, but they have a free speech right to associate with the students that they want to associate with, associate with the students that they think would be most valuable to their mission. And their mission is not simply to admit the students who have the highest GPAs or the highest well, that's, test scores. Well, that's up to the judge to decide. But I think it's okay to, to cite people's life experiences, cultural background. All that might be part of free speech, but certainly not people's genetic factor. That's not freedom. But race for, is for much speech. more than genetic factors. That is factors. More, more like a racial profiling and genetic Let him profiling. Respond. If you can. Race is much more than genetic factors. If, if, if you didn't allow me to talk about my race in my application to law school or to my PhD program, you w I wouldn't be able not only to talk about you know the fact that I am African American, but the fact that I went to African American schools. I grew up in Detroit. That I went to a historically black college. That I was a, a part of the leadership of black s student associations. I wouldn't be able to talk about any but of those. So, Greg, if I may, so when you heard Swan say a minute ago, and there are many Americans mm -hmm. share her perspective that the issue that should be looked at when one is considering diversity is socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. Would that not satisfy you? That's not enough. I, I yeah. disagree with that. Now. Notion um, and always have, it, or and, and, the, and the principal notion I disagree with is that it's either class or race. It can very easily be both. And the thing we but have to remember, let him finish his sentence. The thing yeah. we have to remember is that uh, the the socioeconomically disadvantaged in this country are majority white. Um, so if we had such a system, that's who would be benefited. Can and I go back? You're a constitutional law professor. I I, I assume. Thinking. I mean, as a fairly common sense observer, it seems to me that having Justice Kavanaugh replacing Justice Kevinney, mm -hmm. uh, Kennedy makes it fairly likely that even, assuming this is appealed as mm -hmm. you seem to think and as I seem to think, that even a factor as opposed to the predominant factor is at risk. Could you craft something that would satisfy both of them and the Supreme Court of the United States, this Supreme Court, do you think? Well, I believe that, I, that, that would yes, achieve diversity. Is I, what I'm saying. I do think that that is possible, and that is hopefully what could come out of a trial like this. Because what would the criteria be? It would be that it would, first of all, that it would be that diversity is considered. That you can do that through all kinds of ways, all kinds of myriad considerations. Including of the race of the no, applicant. Not race. Well, so. No. It, I think Swan is saying that she doesn't want race considered yeah. at all. It can be all. abused easily. She doesn't want cons uh. race considered at all. And Greg is saying, well, I want people to be able to talk about their race in their application. I do think there is certainly a way in which you don't say you're disallowed from talking about any aspect of your background, but that Harvard is not going to then consider race as one of its So it gives practices. you a fuller picture of the applicant. Right. I don't agree with that. I think that race should be mm. among the many, many no, factors. I don't think that anybody is saying people should not but talk about race. The they thing. have I the think freedom to talk about race. I think it is a mistake to think that what anyone is proposing is that somehow people are going to 
have to muzzle themselves in talking about their race. Swami that is not kind of actually on the table. No factor. Race can be no factor, even if it's amongst the myriad in your right. estimation. I is that correct? People are free to talk about anything, including their race, in their essays. I'm it's talking about when the choice. determination is being made. Your content, your position is race cannot be even a factor, much no, less. No, not at all. Because zero. Because the most vulnerable members of society will be made the collateral damage for such a vague factor. Each racial group has millions of people using such a general factor to cover all the students is simply just causing injustice. You have the last 30 seconds I on agree, that. I, the only thing uh, Swan said that I agree with is the idea that um, race is very vague. Race in this notion can be divided down in many ways. So there are Hmong communities, Vietnamese communities, Cambodian communities are supremely underrepresented in higher education. But they're and not they determined by their ancestral more. origin. People are unique in regardless of their ancestral but origin. But the diverse, not, the diverse perspective that I they don't think bring, ethnic the profiling should be allowed in our policies. I disagree. We gotta go. That's totally wrong. We'll be back. Thank Hope all go. three of you will join Thank us. You. Good to see you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for your time.